every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good evening and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Omotayo Alo. In our top stories tonight. Thank you so very much for joining us tonight. Now the news in full. The federal government plans to send some members of the Chiba community to neighboring Cameroon in order to verify whether a female suicide bomber arrested in Burnu State on Friday is one of the missing school girls abducted in Chiba almost two years ago. A statement by the senior special assistant on media and publicity to President Mohamed Buhari Gaba Shio says the Minister of Women Affairs Arshal Hassan and Nigerian High Commissioner in Cameroon have already swung into action and are now receiving a lot of cooperation from the Cameroonian authorities. Malam Gaba revealed that the Nigerian High Commissioner in Cameroon, Ambassador Adiza Wan Mustafa, has confirmed that the arrested girls may be brought to the capital Yahunde by Monday, at which point the High Commission will seek permission to meet with them. The Mortala Mohammed Foundation has offered to cooperate with Nigerian government in sponsoring two parents from Chibok who have been selected to embark on the trip to Cameroon. The two are Yakubu Nkinki, and chairman of the parents uh, of the abducted girls from Chibok Association, and Yana Jalan, the group's women leader. The Nigerian High Commission will receive the two and will facilitate their access. To the, school, to the two girls, one's permission to meet and verify the identity is obtained from the Cameroonian authorities. The Taraba State Police Command has confirmed the arrest of two wanted Boko Haram commanders in the state. The state's commissioner of police, Shaba Al-Kali, assessed the terrorists Ali Aldu and Abdulmumini Abdullahi had been handed over to the military in Yoruba State. Udwa Godwin brings us details. In recent times, influx of strangers into Taraba State is becoming alarming, especially in the face of the prevailing situation in the Northeast. Although many are running from the problems there, there still are some concerns about suspicious characters also infiltrating the state. Taraba Police Command is not relenting efforts and looking out for the wrong elements among the visitors and so the command has been able to nab two commanders of the dreaded Boko Haram state in the state. I want to know this when some uh, Boko Harams that are looking for were even arrested here in Tela. I was able to arrest two confirmed Boko Haram members here and then uh, of course we handed them over to the military European. Meanwhile, the police boss is also confirming the date of seven persons in the ongoing communal crisis in Ibi, local government area of the state. He vows to deal with the perpetrators and their sponsors, no matter how highly placed they may be. That is why I want to get to the root. By the time I get to the root, I will not only give you the names of those who are behind it, I will also parade them for everybody to see. The command had deployed men to contain the situation and restore normalcy to the crisis area and is appealing to the public 
to feel free to provide it with useful information to enable you to tackle crime in the state. Udwa Godwin, Koro TV News, Jalingu. As Nigerians groan under the ad sheep of fuel scarcity, which has persisted in recent days, the Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Emmanuel Ibe Kachiko, announced that the crisis over the premium motor spirit will end in a few weeks, precisely in April. This is contrary to an earlier statement credited to the minister in media report in which he was quoted as saying that the current queues at petrol stations would persist to late May. The minister who spoke through a press statement signed by the spokesman of NNPC, Mohamed Gabadin, said measures were in place to ensure a short and long-term plan to end the scarcity in April. The Nigerian National Petroleum Cooperation, NNPC, called for understanding, saying it is working on long and short-term measures to find lasting solutions to the challenge. Away from that, the Department of Petroleum Resources reads the Riot Act to oil marketers ordering depot with petroleum products to commence massive truck out of the product to petrol stations across the country. The DPR, in a statement signed by its director, Petroleum Resources, Mordecai Laden, also directed all petrol stations in strategic locations to operate on a 24 hours throughout Easter holidays and beyond. Laden says the DPR had constituted special intelligence monitoring teams nationwide to ensure prompt delivery of petroleum products to designated filling stations, adding that the teams would enforce government-approved price regime and ensure the right quantity and quality of product are dispensed. And to judiciary matters now, Justice Okun Abang of the Federal High Court Abuja has fixed April 8 to rule on whether to disqualify himself from presiding over the trial of the National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Ulisa Metu Onat. This follows an application and a petition written to Chief Judge of the Court, Ibrahim Auta, by one of Metu's lawyer, Emeka Ichiabe. Etiaba, I beg your pardon, requesting for transfer of the case to another judge on the ground of bias. Metu and his company, Destra Investment Limited, are being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in seven count charge, bordering on fraudulent receipt or 400 million naira from the Office of the National Security Advisor in November 2014. Judiciary correspondent Basil Okafo reports that Metu is appealed against the court's decision on its no-case submission. The PDP spokesman Olisa Metu is here to open his defense after prosecution witnesses conclude their testimony more than a month ago. After the court dismissed his no-case submission for lack of merit, Metu filed a petition against the judge accusing him of bias. But there was an adjournment, an adjournment, senior die, to abide by the Still of uh, proceedings we filed at the Court of Appeal, having entered the appeal uh, at the Court of Appeal, the court considered fully all the arguments and found merit in the fact that the prosecution needed time to react to the applications. The matter has been adjourned to the 8th of April, and on the 8th we'll be here. Metu is also asking the court to order for a stay of proceeding until the Court of Appeal rules on its application against the decision of the court. After listening to parties in the suit, Justice Abank adjourned till April 8th to rule on the various applications filed by the PDP spokesperson. Justice Abank equally heard that if Metu's application asking the judge to disqualify himself from presiding over the case phase, then Metu will open his defense. A midnight fire has for the second time got at the popular southern Gari market in Kanu destroying property worth millions of naira. The fire started at about 1 a.m. and had destroyed several shops in the market. This is the second time in five months that the Savan Gari market will be guarded by fire. And another fire incident, this property worth millions of naira was destroyed, but no life was lost when the Barin Kebi Central Market was guarded by fire in the early hours of today. 
Alaji Abubakar Badam, the chairman of the Central Market Management, who told newsmen in Burney Cabby that the fire was noticed at about 12 midnight, explained that the source of the inferno was yet to be determined. He added that the management of the market was working closely with security agencies to identify the cause, just as he commended the State Department of Fire Service for its prompt response. Chief of Staff of the Government House, Suleiman Agungu, and the Emir of Gwandu, Mohammed Basha, have visited the scene to sympathize with traders who lost their goods. Taraba State Governor Darius Ishako says the over 100 cattle that were, that were stolen by unidentified gunmen will be returned to the original owners at Sassini village in Bali local government area of Taraba State. The 119 cattle were reported to have been stolen at gunpoint at Sassini village two weeks ago while uh, the shepherd of the cartoon, Mohammed Yaya, was also reportedly killed by the cattle rustlers in the process. Presenting the stolen cattle to the original owners at Saseni village, the special advisor to Governor Darius Ishaku and security martyrs, Wunukin Angui, said the cattle were recovered from the cattle rustlers due to the instructions from Governor Darius Ishaku that no stone should be left unturned to recover. The cartels. And moving on, the Nasrara State Police Command has arrested two men in possession of 85,000 Nara fake currencies and another woman for patronizing traders with 22,000 Nara and 1,000 Nara denomination. The State Police Public Relations Officer, ASP Ismaila Newman, disclosed this while parading some of the suspects at the Criminal Investigation Department in Lafia, adding that one of the two suspects was arrested in Lafia on Wednesday, March 16, 2016, in possession of fake 16,000 Naira. Newman revealed that after further investigations, police operatives arrested another suspect with fake currency totaling 69,000 Naira linked to the first suspect. In a separate case, Newman revealed that a middle-aged woman had earlier been arrested with 22,000 Naira fake currency in Doma local government area of the state. According to him, the accused stalkers Augustine, who based in Mararaba, Kakaru local government area, was caught in Doma market March 9 while trying to purchase food items with the fake currency. And civil society organizations in Plato State are calling for the seating of juvenile centers where children who are in conflict with the law can be incarcerated before they are reintroduced to the society. Speaking on behalf of the CSOs at an event in Jos, the Coordinator of Child Protection Network, Plato State, Tony Obemwaso, says such facilities would help the children psychologically or then keep them with the adults in a regular incarcer incarceration facility. The report. For better reformation and rehabilitation, civil society organizations in Plato State say setting up juvenile centers to correct children offenders will do the nation a whole lot of good. To advocate for the implementation of the family courts in the state. Also on the role of the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, we've advocated for the setting up of child juvenile detention centres. These are places where children who are in conflict with the law are being put either to go through some kind of reform. The Commissioner for Women Development and Social Development, Plato State, says such initiatives are in line with the government's agenda, adding that human capital development is a cardinal objective of the ministry. You know that uh, this has been a program in line with the High Point Agenda. We need to look at uh, the human uh, capital and social development. And you cannot develop a society or a state without looking at these children. Due to illicit consumption of drugs, which easily leads to social vices, several minors are in conflict of the law, which often leaves the law enforcement agencies handicapped on how to handle their cases appropriately. 
And after the break, we bring you the Lagos State Governor's message to Lagosians and Nigerians as they celebrate Easter. Do stay with us, then we'll bring you more. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. With over 7 billion of world population and still counting, the world needs to hear you now than ever. Whatever your ministry or vision is, Gospel Africa will help get you there faster than you think possible. For inquiries and participation, contact 009-503-3859 or 0812-076-0011 or visit www.gospelafricang.com Gospel Africa, the number one media solution for the church today. Gospel Africa, showing on this station at this time. You see watching Core TV Primetime News. A quick reminder of our top stories. For our top stories and more, do visit our social media platform, facebook.com forward slash core TV news, or Twitter handle at core TV news NG. You could get more on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash core TV, live space and news. Moving on, and as Christians in the country join their counterpart across the world to celebrate Easter. The Lagos State Governor, Akilmi Ambade, has called the Nigerians to collectively imbibe the spirit of unity, tolerance and peaceful coexistence as the panacea for overcoming the nation's current challenges. Ambade, in his Easter message to Lagosians, said such fundamental values would go a long way in promoting and strengthening the foundation of love, peace and harmony in the society. He added that the season should serve as a reminder to all of the selflessness, love, sacrifice and tolerance of Jesus Christ throughout his earthly surgeon. While we should negotiate a happy Easter celebration, the governor enjoined them to continue to work with his administration by obeying the law, fulfilling their obligations as citizens and stakeholders and remaining vigilant to ensure that Lagos State remains a model of peace and harmonious coexistence in Nigeria. Lagos Deputy Governor Idiat Olurati Adebule is advocating peace among the various religious groups in Nigeria. Speaking at an event in Lagos Stark Walk for Religious Harmony, organized by the Nasir Life Faith Society, NASPAD, and some Christian organizations, she stresses that when different religions see themselves as one, the state and the nation at large will not be prejudiced by some fanatics. Sarah Ayeku has more in this report. Marching along the Ikeja axis to the state secretariat in Lagos, Christian and Muslim faithful propagate the gospel of peace. Tagged Walk for Religious Harmony, the Lagos State Government, in collaboration with the Islamic Society, talks about the essence of the walk and possibility of one religion, diverse worship. It's so issue a warrant of peaceful coexistence in Lagos State. Let our takeaway be that unity amongst Muslims, among Christians, is important for us to be able 
to live as one. Religious leaders must begin to enlighten their members. When we talk about insecurity, one of our greatest challenges at this time is for religious leaders to come together. We religious leaders must I understand that they are development partners all over the world. As part of the 21 years anniversary program, Nasrul Life Fatih Society believes the exercise is based on the goodwill of the Holy Quran. The caliber of people who have witnessed this particular program, they are pastors who are going to minister on the pulpit, they are imams who are going to talk to people that Christians don't hate Muslims, Muslims don't hate Christians. It is our hope that we now have an understanding amongst us and that it will further bring peace between us and there will be religious harmony. In solidarity, pastors from the Redeemed Christian Church of God and Foursquare Bible Church enjoy Nigerians to see themselves as one and to shun any form of prejudice. There's hardly any family where you have Muslims and you don't have Christians. So it's just like a family coming together during a festive period. I think it's a normal thing. It's what we should have. Religious harmony is a phenomenon that is needed more than ever before in Nigeria. It is hoped that more of this collaboration between both faiths will be encouraged. Sarah Ayuku, Court TV News, Lagos. And as the nation marks another Easter celebration, Plato residents lamenting the poor economic situation in the country that has been aggravated by a few scarcity. Speaking with our correspondent in Joss, they bemoan the ripple effect of the fuel prices and scarcity that has thrown the economy into a situation similar to depression. The call and the government to quickly diversify the economy. The report. Plato residents say the poor economy and inflation in the cost of goods is affecting the Easter celebrations. Some motorists assert that the poor economy is as a result of the fuel scarcity which has been left to the black marketers who sell at exorbitant prices. No, add, add the, the gallon now is 1,000. That is what we buy. And even though to cover that uh, 1,000, we find it difficult. Uh, it has affected my world because yesterday I bought full of uh, 1,000 naira. I couldn't make up, even up to one for one for. My commission was increasing. Calling on the government to end the persistent economic hardship, some traders in Jos Main Market narrate their ordeal with customers and transporters in the course of transacting their businesses. Very well, right now we are buying 13,500 instead of 8,000. Red, uh, white curry, we are buying 9,000 instead of 6,500. So everything is high now. Why? Sure. Okay. Before, from here to Lagos, we are 4,500. But now, 5,500. Understand, uh -huh. So, as we transport go, buy goods come, you know, even a goose, that's why we would say 500 now, 800 now. It's really affecting us, we are not finding it funny. There is no light, even for the customer to patronize you, when there is no light. The fuel, like yesterday we bought for 1,005, 1,003, and you tell customer to, to, to use the other, they don't have money. An economist from Plato State Polytechnic Daniel Fidelis narrates his ordeal at a fuel station as he blames the dire economic hardship on successive states and federal governments who failed to diversify the economy. 5M, the queue was so long that I was up pushing and I was going to the queue. Until around 4 p.m. I couldn't take the get the So when I just strolled down to the mega station, what I saw was terrible. Residents are of the opinion that the present economic hardship will continue if the government of the day also fails to diversify the economy from oil. Bukhari State Government has earmarked 100 million naira as counterpart fund to combat malnutrition in the state. Governor Chiku Bagudu disclosed this in Baron Kabi when he received the chief nutritionist of UNICEF Arjun Dawat. Bagudu says the fight against malnutrition would be jointly executed with UNICEF's working to improve nutrition in Northern Nigeria initiative. He explained that the collaboration would reduce maternal and child mortality as well as improve 
the nutritional status of pregnant women and children under five years in the state. Represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Alaji Babale Umar, the Governor showed the partners of his commitment to improve health care delivery in the state. Funding is one of the most important ways to sustain and maintain the laid down vision and objective of any parastatal or government agency, especially the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. This thought was shared at a forum organized for Nigerian parents to wake up to the reality of what their children might turn to and how to curb the excesses of drugs. Sarah Ayeko reports. With rapt attention, parents listen to dangers and effects of drug abuse on the young and the old. Within the last decade, the consumption of hard drugs has drastically increased in Nigeria. Substances such as alcohol, cannabis, among others, are now being taken frequently, and in large quantities by our youth, damning the side effects. How aware should you be? At this point, our level of awareness of the presence on devastating effect of drug is less than 10 percent. It's only the people that have been touched that seem to be aware. It is a huge problem. Although policies have been made to curb the abuse of drugs, implementation is needed. I know the government started NDLA. I think we need to restructure NDLA in terms of its activities. And then we need to fund NDLA. I know that they don't have enough funds. According to statistics, Nigeria used to be considered as a transit nation, but now it is known as a user nation. How can we salvage what we have left? If we don't work together in a holistic manner, the work of NDLA can show. They may be interdicting, stopping people from taking drugs abroad, but what about the drugs that are here? We need to work together. This is the time. As the world revolves, a man and its values seem to be caught up in the middle of good and evil. It is important that we hold on to the good values on which any nation, and indeed Nigeria, must be built. Sarah Ayoku, Court TV News, Lagos. And in a similar call to parents, they have been charged not to lay emphasis on outlands, but on an enduring values and to see themselves as a determining factor that can make or destroy the young generation. At a stakeholders meeting in Lagos, various speakers from the different institutions settled with raising and shaping the child's development note the importance of leading an exemplary lifestyle so as to revive what they call a degenerating generation. The report. Parenting is one of the most important and interesting jobs anyone can ever have. Bequeathed with the duty of helping to shape the future of a nation, raising children have somewhat become smeared with increased level of moral decadence among people, especially youth in the country. Who then is to blame for this decadence? The area of influence in the lives of the children must continue to be the weak link. All arms of the areas of influence in the lives of the children must come together. Everybody must live up to their responsibilities so we do not fail the next generation. Parents need to be aware and they need to be alive to their responsibilities. They need to be aware and they need to be very open to learn new things. With emphasis on parenting as a major factor in making or marrying a child, Nigeria still has a chance of salvaging the younger generation. Children must learn to know that for everything they do, they have to account for it. They must show responsibility. They must be able to speak the truth always. And by so doing, with all these attributes, they would have a better society. The responsibility of raising a child does not only lie with the parents, but with the school, church, family, and even the government. So you need other people to be your eyes. If you have an attitude, the children's teacher are never going to tell you that your child is misbehaving. Because they're right, she has false ears around her. Other people must have an input in the lives of your children. Youths make up about 60% of Nigeria's population, and if not properly guided, may spell doom for the future. Hence, the need for the immediate family as well as political and spiritual leaders to invest in the younger generation now. Sarah Ayoku, Court TV News, Lagos. On the foreign scene after the break, Belgian prosecutors have charged a man whose name was given as a fake OC with terrorist offenses 
in connection with Tuesday's attacks in Brazil's China again. Thinking of how to send goods to anywhere? Think OCO Mail Services. Our career and logistics is world class. What of your travel needs? OCO Travel and Tours can handle everything from ticketing, hotel reservation, and more. OCO Mail and OCO Travel and Tours, subsidiaries of Orcard Security and Investment Limited OCO. Visit us today. Core TV News now live on all Androids. Welcome to Core TV Primetime News. Download Core TV News app from your Play Store. Click on the menu to see all our top stories from politics, sports, business, foreign news, and live TV to watch us live on your mobile. I want to know why I should be believing them. You can also click on video to see all our YouTube videos. Core TV News, a 24 hour news station. To stars from outside Nigeria now, Belgian prosecutors have charged a man whose name was given as a fecal scene with terrorist offenses in connection with Tuesday's attacks in Brazil that left 31 dead, including three bomber. A fifth of the victims died at the airport, the rest in an attack on the in-suicide bombings claimed by so-called Islamic State. Belgian prosecutors say the Vehicle C had been detained outside the prosecutor's office in Brazil on Thursday. He was charged with participation in the activities of a terrorist group, terrorist murders, and attempted terrorist murders, but it gave no further details and made no comment on Belgian media reports that he was the third man in an airport CCTV image that showed the two suicide bombers. Najim Lachero and Brahim El Baroque. The third man wearing the hat and pill jacket also had luggage packed with explosives. However, he was said to have fled without detonating his device. Iraq has buried the victims of a suicide attack in the football match in the city of Iskandaria that killed at least 32 people. Many of the dead were young boys who were in a trophy ceremony hit by bomber, himself said to be a teenager. ICE, a mainly Sunni group which controls large swaths of northern and western Iraq and has attacked numerous shy targets in the country, has claimed responsibility. UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon, who is in Iraq for talks with the government, expressed his condolence to the families of the victims. At least 10 suicide attackers from the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL attempted to storm one of the largest army bases in Iraq. Eight of the fighters were killed by soldiers at In al Assad base, and two remaining fighters managed to blow themselves up, adding to unconfirmed number of casualties. Furthermore, Iraqi forces launched an offensive L to retake Ambal province, even as 60 to 70 percent of the province remains under the control of ISIL. And now to the world of sports. Our style, and that's what he delivered. In sport now, a long-range wonder goal by Lotho Kekana, which is set to be played over and over again on international platforms, was not enough to give visiting Bafana Bafana all the three points over Cameroon in Limb. After Bafana had taken the lead through regular goal scorer Tokolo Rente in the 17th minute, the home team equalized at the stroke of halftime as the two teams went to break deadlocked at 1-1. But soon after the break, Kakana turned on the talking point in this qualifiers when it turned defense into attack. The big midfielder, who has a knack of scoring spectacular goals, sported the Cameroonian goalkeeper off his line and from inside his area unleashed a dazzling drive, which sailed into the back of the net as the stunned home side were packed back again and watched helplessly as the game ended in a stalemate. Asna are understood to be interested in signing Brussels 
Merchen Lagberg, midfielder Granite Zaka. The 23-year-old's father had reportedly met with Emirates manager Asin Wenger, who is believed to be ready to pay a fee of around 43 million euros for his services. Saka is contracted to Merton League back until 2019 after joining them four years ago from Bears. Romoli Lukaku, Romelu, I beg your pardon, Romelu Lukaku, discussed doubt on his Everton future by stating he wants to play Champions League football next season. The Belgian striker is in Brazil with his international teammate as they prepare for the rearranged fixture with Portugal. However, he was adamant that the Champions League is the next step for him as he said he is keen to test himself against Europe's elite in next season's campaign. Britain's Mofar won a bronze medal as Kenya's Godfrey Kamwaro won back-to-back -back World Half Marathon titles in testing conditions in Cardiff. Forest time of 59 minutes, 59 seconds in fast pace race was 20 seconds off his own European record. Defending champion Kamwaro won in 59 and 59 minutes, 10 seconds, despite falling at the start, while compatriot Bedan Karoki finished second. And on the entertainment scene, marriage is the union between a man and woman. It is in this view that Yemisi ties the knot in early matrimony with our indefatigable lover, Adibola. Event filled with glamour and happiness as friends and family wish them a blissful marital life. Core TV Victoria Solomon was there, but this report presented from our studio. What God has done together, let no man put asunder. It's our celebration galore as Core TV News staff member Adebola and Yemesi his Hathro tie the nuptial knot in a grand style. The couple simply could not hold down their joy. Yamasi and Adebola Ogunkoya say marriage is not just about two people coming together, but two people who have found someone they can't live without. The couple were all smiley as different rites were done, promised to be each other's support and helper till death do them part. Very, very happy, you know. The Bible says what's going to adjust together, nobody put us on that. Well, I'm just going to go with the, the, the second focusing I'm having about. I'm going to believe in that because it's going to enhance the way I behave and what I believe in and what I become. So I'm so excited for today. I've been looking forward to it for the past years. <laughs> in fact, I don't even know that this day is going to come, but at least finally it has come to pass. Very, very happy and I feel very fulfilled. Um, I've been expecting this for so long, but, I, but we thank God everything came out well. I'm very, very happy and very, very excited about today. Um, I would like to tell people to be patient, to wait for the right one, um, to be very prayerful because this is not a very easy journey. We hear, people, we love, we hear a lot of stories from people. Um, so I just, and I wish all my friends are still single, this kind of joy that I feel today. Parents of the groom also express their joy and wish the couple better days ahead. Thank God, I'm very, very happy because I give God the glory, honor, and adoration because I'm alive. Although my wife is not there, but to God Almighty be the glory. I'm very happy, me and my household. And I thank God. I wish them happy married life. My brother, and he's my son, and I love him so much. So this, their marriage, is to be the place The groom, who was formerly called Senator by members of staff in Court TV News, received lots of prayers and well wishes from his colleagues. My 
Siblings and well wishes took turns to speak about the couple. I'm very excited. I'm very happy. He's my brother, so I have to be very happy. I wish him a happy married life. I wish him all the best. I wish him a fulfilled life. I, I wish him that he should be happy all throughout his lifetime. She's hardworking. She's loyal. She's disciplined. She's dedicated. And I wish her a very, very happy married life. I know she'll be a success. She's a success. She will succeed in her marriage. God will be with her home. Yes. Um, he's my mentor, kind of. In one way or the other, like that. Yeah, yes. I'm happy for him, though. She understand. And I'm looking for it. It's, it's like this kind of guy that I set his face very, very high. You get. And um, for me to actually catch up to that place, I have to work extra. Hard. She understand. That's the kind of guy he is. And I'm really happy for him. With this joyous celebration, it is hoped that the newly wed would enjoy blissful years in marriage. A very big congratulations to Adebola and Yemisi Ogunkoye as they become one. And just before we go tonight, a quick reminder of our top stories. On behalf of the entire news crew, thank you so very much for joining us tonight. I am Omotayo. Hello.